The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you solemnly, it will be hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Yes, I tell you again, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. When the disciples heard this, they were astonished. Who can be saved then? They said. Jesus gazed at them. For men, he told them, it is impossible. For God, everything is possible. Then Peter spoke. What about us? He said to him. We have left everything and followed you. What are we to have then? Jesus said to him, I tell you solemnly, when all is made new and the Son of Man sits on his throne of glory, you will yourselves sit on twelve thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, brothers, sisters, father, mother, children or land for the sake of my name will be repaid a hundred times over and also inherit eternal life. Many who are first will be last and the last first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Even now, I feel triumphant when I'm able to thread a needle. I learned it when I was small. I remember my, I would see my mother do it, uh, where she moistens the, the tip of the, of the thread and then pushes it through the eye of the needle. But there were times when, I know when I was small, I... I kind of stubbornly thought to myself, I don't need to, to moisten the tip of the, of the thread. And you should give it a try, unless you, if you haven't, you should give it a try without, without wetting the tip. And then if that tip of the thread is, is either fluffy or the fibers are out, and then try and push it in through the eye of the needle and the Thread suddenly seems to have life. It keeps moving around. It will go in all directions except through the eye of that needle. It doesn't seem to want to be restricted within the eye of the needle. In today's gospel passage, Jesus speaks about the camel passing through the eye of the needle. And there are different interpretations given to this some falsely as well. Um, they say that when you go to, when you go to the Holy Land, um, there will be guides who will actually show you a particular entrance that is supposed to be, a small entrance that's supposed to be the eye of the needle, was called as the eye of the needle, and that is what Jesus was referring to. Um, but there's no archaeological evidence that says that that particular gate was even there during Jesus' time. It was supposed to be, um, have been made way later. So there are different interpretations given about this concept of Jesus saying the camel passing through the eye of the needle because apparently in earlier times it was the elephant passing through the eye of the needle. That was the more traditional um, usage of, of, this, of, this particular, um, of this particular statement the elephant passing through the eye of a needle. So Jesus then saying the camel passing through the eye of the needle seems to be confusing. So though we don't have clarity about what this actually means, and even biblical scholars don't have clarity and consensus about what this actually means, it's quite obvious when we put it into the context of where Jesus said this, that we understand what Jesus is trying to mean and what Jesus is trying to, to make us understand. Let's put this in context. The rich young man, that is the reading of yesterday, the rich young man comes to Jesus and asks him, 
What should I do to have eternal life? And then Jesus obviously tells him, keep the commandments. He says, I've kept all of those. And then Jesus says, you need only one more thing. It's interesting that this same verse, today's gospel passage is from Luke. Yesterday also it was from Luke. But the incident with the rich young man in the gospel of Mark chapter 10 when he tells Jesus, I have done everything, I've kept all those commandments, in verse 21 of Mark 10, it says, Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, there's only one more thing you need. Go and sell all your possession. He loved him. So it wasn't Jesus putting him down, but rather Jesus loved him and said, there's only one more thing you require. There's one thing that is stopping you from having total union with me. And that is go and sell your possession. And the word tells us he goes back sad. Why? Because he was stuck and attached to his possessions. So what richness is Jesus speaking about? When Jesus says, the rich cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. It is not in reference to people who just have money. But it is in reference, keeping in, in mind the context in which we are speaking, the rich young man who has come there with, with his possessions and couldn't let go of his possessions. So the richness is connected to the attachment to richness. The attachment that you have to riches. And that attachment will stop you from having that union with God, says the Lord to us. That attachment that you have to riches. Now that riches doesn't necessarily mean wealth. It can mean anything else. The richness can be something that we are attached to. The richness can be things that are connected to evil or even the richness that is, the, the attachment to riches that are connected to good. So it can go both sides. We can have an attachment to our ego. We can be rich in that way as well. A lot of ego and our attachment to our ego. Or an attachment to our pride. Or an attachment to our arrogance. That becomes our richness in many ways. The richness that we are not able to let go of. And as long as we are not able to let go of these and we are attached to these, I'm attached to my pride, I'm attached to my stubbornness. I'll not let go of these. I will always struggle to have that union with God because I'm not being able, or God is not able to teach me or able to mold me into his image and likeness. My richness has got over me. But far worse might be when that richness is connected to something that is good. Like maybe a family. Maybe we are rich in our family relationships and we are so attached to it that we find it hard to even let go of our family relationships. We are obsessed with them and maybe they are far more important to us than being in union with God. And that's what happened with the rich young man, that riches was far more important to him than being in union with Jesus. So it can be that we, we have the attachment to our family as our riches or it can be the attachment that we have towards our careers that can be our riches. I'm rich in my career and I'm obsessed with it as well and I'm not able to let go of it. Or I'm, I'm, I'm rich in the position I hold. I'm so attached to that position. I'm, I'm a parish priest over here. This is my position. I'm comfortable in this position and this now is my riches. Tomorrow, my, my superiors tell me to go somewhere else and I'm disturbed and I'm troubled about it, then I'm attached to this position. If I'm still fighting over the fact that I don't want to move from here, then this position is what makes me comfortable. This position is my attachment. This has become my riches. This is what will restrict me from going through and passing through the eye of the needle. I'm not able to shed that riches because I'm too attached to it. It can happen with my wealth or my health. I'm attached to my health. I'm obsessed with my health. 
because I want to live longer in this world. So we can have many riches like this where we are so attached to it. We ask ourselves, what is it that I'm so attached to? What has become my riches that I cannot let go of? And that will become my hindrance to pass through the eye of the needle. Didn't Jesus say, the gate to the kingdom of heaven is narrow? We have to squeeze ourselves through getting rid of all these attachments that we have so that we can pass right through and find that union with God. In Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, we would read Hebrews 13, verse 5. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Sorry. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For the Lord says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you. So let's, let's change that, that word love of money to just the concept of riches. The concept of riches to which we are attached to. Keep your lives free from those attachments and be content with what I give you, says the Lord. And I will be there for you. No wonder the Lord says in Matthew chapter, chapter 6, verse 24, no one can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other or be devoted to the one or despise the other. We cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve the attachment to the riches of our life when we want to serve our God. So we choose today. Who is it that is important? Getting through the eye of the needle or maybe playing around it and trying to escape it by being attached to our riches. Let's close eyes for a moment. Lord, we thank you for the blessings you've given us in life. Our families, our health, our wealth, our relationships, our position, our careers. But maybe, Lord, at times, these have turned into our riches that we are attached to. We are disturbed when any of them have to be shared. We are disturbed when family relationships and in family relationships, someone passes away and we can't let go of it. Then that becomes my attachment of riches. Or when I'm asked to move from one position to the other, or when certain aspects of my career have to be shared in order to be in union with you. And I'm disturbed by it. I'm attached to these riches. Lord, give me the grace that on this journey of life, I'm never attached to my riches. I thank them for it. But if one day they have to be shed so that I fit through the eye of a needle and I find my union with you, then give me the courage, the strength, and the heart to shed them all it is you who are far more important to me than anything else.